hello again. So this video again is sponsored by Autodesk. And what I wanted to do with this one is go back to the absolute basics and assume that you don't know anything about visual programming because I guess most, most people don't. I didn't before I started meddling around with ICE. And my first impression was that it's incredibly complicated and not for people like me. And that's what a lot of people would automatically assume. And I don't see that that's a, um, unreasonable thing to think. However, it is a lot easier than it looks and it enables you to pretty much do whatever you want to do to a mesh or you know anything which involves points. So okay so a mesh is made up of points and polygons that go between them or faces um, and what Bifrost allows you to do so if I start a Bifrost graph here is bring objects into Bifrost. I mean, it allows other stuff as well, but you can bring objects into Bifrost and that appears here as a mesh. And then you can do stuff to it and then output and it outputs a BIF, which is just, you know, it's the, that's the input object, the BIF is the output object. Now, if I look at this, so what's going on here is a bunch of data, different types of data, which, you know, the mesh is, is the input here. Um, if I look along the um, pipe, basically all of these bits of info are like traveling along the pipe. So you know, face component, fate offset. I don't, you know, I don't use most of those. Most of this stuff I'm just doing with points. So the, the point normal and the point position are the most useful thing if you're doing, um, you know, deformation stuff. You do use this other stuff occasionally, but you know, this is really all you need to worry about for the, for the, when you start off. And what this means is there's 366 elements, that means 366 points on the object, and this tells you the type of data. So um, a point normal and a point position are both x, y, z. Um, you know, it's like a vector with three elements, or a vector three. So it's th there's x, y, and z, one, two, three elements. Um, and yeah, so 366 components, don't have to worry really about that bit at the moment. And that's it. So, so a list of, um, because it's not just like a, if you had an object with a single point, it would just be one bit of data going through here because we've got 366. Each of those things are doing the calculations along here. So it's an array of, an array is basically like a list. So if we wanted to get the point position and just deal with that, we'd do get point position, plug that in, and then we could also set point position and plug that in instead. We want to set it on this mesh here. So this is doing nothing useful it's just getting the point positions doing nothing to it and then setting the point positions now at this point because this is what we're dealing with this green line here is an array of all of the point positions and an array again means a list and you can tell it's an array because it has these little hat symbols here instead of the square ones which are single that's single because it's one mesh that's a little hat means it's an array because it's all of the points 366 points and they're all doing the calculation that are on here. So if I wanted to um, do a very simple thing, let's do add. Let's add something to those point positions. So we've got the point positions. Here we'll create a value node and that automatically creates a, a vector. So if we added one to the Y value then each one of these points is just going to add one on the Y. So yeah. <clears throat> the effect is that the, let's just hide the original cylinder, that's the input, but they've all moved up. Or if I did it on the X, they'd all move one in the X value, because that's the X as seen here, it's going across. So that's a really simple graph. <clears throat> Hopefully that's, that's clear. But with visual programming, you can choose what you want to do to this data and how you want to affect it. So for example, if I wanted to, I could just move the ones which are 
uh, above the ground plane to the X and leave all the rest as they were. So to do that, I'd have to first of all um, find out which points are greater than zero, which is the ground plane, on the um, one going up, which is the Y. So I'd get the point position and then I'd split that into the X, um, the Z, you know, X, Y, Z coordinates. So to do that, there's a node called um, vector vector three because it's three values to scalar, which is just basically the, the individual values. And we want to get the y, which is the one which goes up and down, <clears throat> and say if that's greater than zero, which is the ground plane. So we get this second value, and we put look over here at zero. And that, that's going to output, that's orange, because that's a different type. Basically, these are going to just say yes or no. So it's like a Boolean value. It's either yes or no. They are they greater? It'd be yes. And you know, other ones would be no. These ones down here would be no. These ones here would be yes. And we can use that to do an if. Basically, so all of these little yes or no's are, again, there's 366 of these yes or no answers coming out of here and they correspond in the list. Their place on the list corresponds with these ones place on the list. Um, you know, there's a sort of um, order that all these points are uh, to have on the list and that doesn't change. So we've got a list of 366 point positions, 366 yes or no's, and we can hook those up with this true or false to either have this result here, which is where we've added it, or this result here before we added it is just like where they were before. So if we do false, just where they were originally, and true, where they are moved in the X, and then the output into there, you'll see that the points above the X, um, sorry, above the ground plane in the Y are moved to the, to the, you know, this, I've got this extra value of the X added to them and the other ones haven't. So if I move the original, if I show the original cylinder and I move it up and down, um, you'll see the Biff object, which I'll just move the Biff object to the right just as it's more obvious. As this one here goes up and down, you can see that as soon as the points on this one here, this is the input geometry, as soon as they go above zero, then they get flung to the right because this other one in the x-axis is being added to them. Now, hopefully you followed what was going on while I was saying that. Now, somebody else would look at this tree if you showed them without my explanation or without the thought process going into it, and that just looks like a complicated thing going on, which most people who are new to this would go, well, I could never do that because that looks really complicated. There's just like a bunch of nodes vectored to scale. I don't understand what that means. Great. The thing is, once you know, once you learn a few things, you'll do this stuff and to other people it would look complicated, but it's not that complicated because you're just following a, a logic to it. And as you go, you learn more and more of these, what these things do. And there's not that many of them, to be honest. I mean, that this, okay, there's, it looks like a lot when you go in here. But like a lot of these ones, you know, you don't, you only use once in a blue moon. If you learn like the 20 most useful nodes, there's an enormous amount of stuff you can do with just 20, you know, 20 or so nodes. Um, so I just wanted to do a video on that, on a very basic level, just to sort of um, show to people who might just think, well, I can't understand that. Now, I mean, if you don't understand what I've done here, then, <laughs> um, uh, you know, obviously it's probably not for you, but I don't think it's super complicated. All right. Cheers.